I am David Rich, Sustainable Energy Manager with NPPD. And uh, I think uh, I, being on the committee, get to choose where I want to moderate. And I looked at this program and I thought this was the best one of the conference. So that's why I chose this. Everybody likes free money. You're going to hear from both the state and the federal of programs that are available. I think there's some super good programs out there for all different levels. So first of all, we'll have Aaron Miller talk about the, and his background is with the Nebraska Department of Environment and Energy. He's a supervisor over energy loans and planning section. He's been there since 2014. So with that, Aaron. Perfect. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Like Dave said, my name's Aaron Miller. I work with the Nebraska Department of Environment and Energy, and it's great to see so many people here today. Um, I think there was sold out attendance, so I do have to apologize that a, uh, uh, some, a couple weeks ago I did promise some of you Taylor Swift may have been here um, today, so if you're here, I, uh, because of that, sorry, um, but there's always tomorrow, maybe. Um, again, I work with our energy programs. I worked with our program since 2014, um, and specifically our dollar and energy savings program. Uh, which I'm going to talk about today and how that can incorporate into uh, solar for agriculture, farmers, ranchers, things of that nature. My team has also been really busy over this last year working on funding from the IIJ and IRA uh, federal funds. So we've been putting together several new programs for that. And the funding, total funding that just my team is getting is over $200 million dollars. Uh, from the federal uh, uh, stimulus packages. And so we've been working really hard on those. We're providing uh, funding for to upgrade, upgrade the Nebraska's grid um, to modernize that. We're putting together a benchmarking program for K through 12 public schools. We're funding uh, communities, small municipalities to make energy efficiency upgrades to their uh, communities and uh, a couple other programs as well. So. Uh, we're really busy focused on that, um, and so one of the things pertaining to solar that we just got done working on putting an application in is uh, application for solar for all. So what that is is a, a grant application through the Environmental Protection Agency to provide solar for rural and urban uh, low-income populations, residents uh, across the state. So we partnered with... Um, uh, couple coalition members, the uh, MPBD, OPBD, LES, and the city of Grand Island to put together an application uh, for 70 million to, to bring that to our state. So we're really excited about doing that um, and looking forward to uh, hoping, hopefully being able to implement that program throughout the state. So today, uh, I really thought that the presentation over lunch that uh, Senator Johans gave was really good. Um, it's kind of detailing the benefits of solar and renewables in the, the agricultural sector. So I'm not going to go over uh, kind of what he, he talked about already. He did it much better than I could. So, But again, on the state level, we do have a program that does help farmers, ranchers help finance these uh, projects up front and really helps reduce their costs when they're putting in these, these projects. So our dollar and energy savings loan program is the program that helps us do that. It's a co-lending model. Uh, so we partner with Nebraska-based banks and financial institutions to provide loans, low interest loans for um, a variety of different people, but they also do include the, the agricultural sector, farmers and things of that nature. So today I'm going to kind of go over the, some of the program uh, benefits, the requirements, how the process works, how you can actually go and, and get one of these loans, uh, what benefit it's going to provide you, and then some uh, notable projects that we've done throughout the state. The program itself has been around for about 33 years. So it started in 1990 and was funded with oil overcharge funds. And currently we have around 50 million in the program. And that just keeps revolving year after year. So uh, depending on how many projects we get in, kind of determines the amount of funding we have in any given year. We've augmented those funds uh, with some additional ARA funding over the years. Uh, and those are available to residential customers, uh, businesses in the state, as well as farmers, ranchers, uh, and different agricultural projects. So the lenders are really the main key to the program. So again, we partner with Nebraska chartered banks and financial institutions across the state, which is really be beneficial to them. It helps 
um, increase their customer base, increase their um, amount of loan pool, and helps them get a higher rate of return on their loans they're doing. So there's about 290 different lenders across the state that can participate in the program. We don't have any specific requirements other than that they need to be chartered in the state of Nebraska. Um, so they don't have to go uh, through any lengthy uh, application process or anything like that. If they're a chartered bank in the state, they automatically qualify. Uh, they do have to follow some guidelines for the program. Uh, our interest rates, uh, 5% or less uh, is the requirement, so they can't charge more than 5%. And um, they have to treat the loans as any other loan that they would normally service, so that helps um, reduce the risk of um, uh, defaults and, and lend risky lending practices, I guess. So again, some of the banks we partner with um, across the state are listed here. Um, the rates vary. Again, I said the cap was 5%, but they can be down um, to 1% depending on the lender and the type of loan that we are participating in. And how we do it, we participate in a percentage of loan, participate or purchase a loan, a portion of the loan from the lender. And that can range from anywhere to 65 to 95% or 90% of the loan. Um, and really kind of the benefits uh, to the lender I'll go through here. Um, again, they're going to be made to residential, commercial, uh, local governments. Um, we've done loans in quite a few different sectors. Uh, they can be for building improvements. So if you have a home um, or a business, they can, uh, building upgrades can be done, uh, lighting retrofits, uh, also renewable, you can put solar on your home, business, um, and also like we're talking about today in, on, on your farm or um, on your ranch. So participation rates, again, kind of a breakdown. So we participate 65% um, if the loan is below 3.5%, 50% if the loan is above that, um, up to 5%. And then we have some special programs for public schools. Uh, we'll purchase 90% of the loan from lenders at a 1% interest rate for schools. And then uh, we do have a special program we run within PBD um, that kind of coincides with their rebate program um, where we uh, provide a 1.5% rate for heat pumps. Uh, the maximum, so again, we do have a limited pool that we draw from, and so we do have some maximums uh, for projects across the state. For residential customers, it's 125000 For businesses, it can go up to 500000 and that is subject to availability. Uh, we have gone over that on a few projects um, when we've had additional funding, so it kind of just depends on when we have the funding available. Typical loan terms range from anywhere from five to 15 years um, for projects, and that is dependent on the project. Usually the projects with the longer payback can go out longer. So if you're looking to get a loan, um, looking to put a solar project up on your farm or ranch, um, this is going to be how, how the process works. And really for the borrower, it's going to look pretty similar just to getting a loan um, through your, their bank or lending institution. So what you'd want to do, uh, get a bid from your uh, uh, solar provider. Um, and usually we don't, or we don't require a specific, um, you know, anything that a contractor has to go through. We'll accept bids from any contractors. But we do recommend, you know, going local. That really helps local businesses for solar providers. I know there's some here today. Um, the utilities also have a trade ally partner list that they develop. Um, and so we always recommend they go through um, them as well. But the borrower will want to get a loan, uh, a bid, and then go to uh, their lending institution. Um, there's a couple forms they fill out. They um, work with their lender, make sure they're qualified to get a loan through the bank. That information is submitted to us. We review the application, and then if everything looks good, we provide the okay to the lender, um, and then the borrower can go ahead and do, do the project. So on the borrower end, that's really kind of the, the all it is. It's a couple extra forms, a couple extra paperwork they have to fill out, but really a simple process to do that. Um, once the project's completed, then we work with the banks to do the purchase of the loan, and the borrower just repays that like they normally would. So some requirements, so the borrower must be a Nebraska resident or um, the property must be, and the property must be located in Nebraska to do the loan program. Um, they can, uh, the loan program can be used in conjunction with other incentives. So if it's another federal incentive, like a tax credit or a rebate, they can still finance the project with a, um, uh, the remaining amount that, that is needed to be financed for that. Uh, the borrower has to be approved um, through the bank and that kind of helps keep, again, our default rate down. Our default rate, I believe, 
is less than 1% for all our loans we do, so it's pretty low. And then the equipment, um, we have certain requirements for the equipment as well. And uh, uh, we must, I guess, the requirement, the last requirement is that we have to approve the project before that can be done. So just kind of a few things that uh, are listed on here are kind of the um, requirements. So like for solar modules, they have to be approved uh, with the UL fire rating. Um, appliances have to be ENERGY STAR certified. Uh, HVAC systems have to meet certain um, EER uh, ratings and, and things like that. So really the benefit to the borrower for the program, um, they're gonna have a low interest financing um, loan. Hopefully they're gonna save money. If you're going out to get a loan um, without using the program, probably gonna be charged anywhere from seven to 12% interest right now. And those rates uh, currently are you know, obviously rising as well. So really that's the biggest benefit for the, the borrower is to get that savings on the interest rate. And over 15 years, that can make a pretty big uh, significant um, cost reduction. So also they get energy efficiency equipment and uh, saving on their energy bills. The lender, the benefits to them, um, they're gonna be able to charge interest on the full loan amount. So we don't collect any interest on our portion. Uh, the bank gets to keep the interest on the full amount, which basically gives them an effective rate of around 10%, which is quite a bit higher than they'd normally uh, be able to get if we just purchased a, a portion of the loan. All right, so now some examples of ag projects we have done. Um, so this is a project, project in Sumner, Nebraska that we've done. I think it's about a 62 KW project. So really one of the big benefits of uh, agricultural solar is there's a lot of space, right? So usually you have um, space that's not being used. You have big uh, hog barns like this that you have a large roof area. The hog barns use a ton of hog or chicken barns, use a ton of energy. Um, so it really makes sense for the, the ag producers to, to use the solar on those. So, um, and one thing to note uh, that, you know, as, as I was kind of going through this, um, farmers have always, you know, grown energy or produced energy, um, whether it's been from uh, ho or hay or oats to feed their livestock, um, or more recently corn um, to provide ethanol. So it does make sense to use uh, these solar projects or renewable projects to, to generate energy for their farms. All right. Uh, another bigger, bigger project. So the picture is kind of small on the left there, but this was uh, two 91 KW projects um, up around the Lexington area. Um, this is one of the bigger projects we've done. Uh, and so again, really similar to the last one, but um, just kind of shows the, the use of the solar in these um, barns. A um, couple smaller projects we've done, and generally we do kind of on the smaller end, smaller end of the projects. Um, project around Ashland on the top left, and then um, uh, another one in Sumner on the bottom. So uh, some other projects across the state that we haven't been involved in, but I did want to kind of just make note of. Um, there's a valley irrigation project that's been um, developed to uh, provide solar power to um, pivots and so that's something I think we're going to see a lot more of. I know there's been several utility projects um, that may be in development um, to help benefit, uh, help do do those kind of pivot projects and really that's one of the things our loan program done is the, over the years is help with irrigation as well so uh, one of the big things our loan program did um, back a while ago when farmers were kind of moving from diesel um, irrigation to electric uh, we provided loans for for those so um, and like Senator Johans mentioned today, they can get lease agreements on these um, uh, solar projects. Uh, it can be anywhere from 250 um, to 2,000 an acre per year. So they do get that, um, potentially get steady income for those. All right. Last thing, um, these don't show any, but I did want to mention kind of the agrovoltaic um, potential projects uh, with solar. So um, you can kind of see here on some of these smaller ones, you do have some shading, um, a lot of uh, vegetation, flowers, um, uh, vegetables and things like that do um, better without direct sunlight. So there's definitely some potential um, for agrovoltaics um, with projects as well. So um, yeah. So overall, I think there's a pretty big opportunity for uh, solar 
in agriculture. Um, these are just some of the numbers for our loan program. So over the years, we've done over 30,000 projects, um, just under $400 million um, worth in project totals. But you can kind of see here, here's a breakdown of our projects by sector. So agriculture, you can see at the top there, very low um, as far as what, what the funding has gone towards, and then pretty low for wind and solar as well. So I think there's a lot of potential for um, additional um, funding in those areas, and hopefully um, uh, we see more of that um, in the coming, coming years. So uh, if there's any questions, um, I'm happy to answer those uh, at the end, I guess. Next, we have Kate Bowles. Uh, Kate is the Rural Development State Director for the Nebraska USDA office. She has come from an extensive economic and community development experiment. Help me welcome Kate. Okay, does anybody in the room like beer? Yeah, where are my beer lovers at? Um, <laughs> I've got a few friends in the audience. So a couple of years ago, we partnered with our friends, um, Caleb and Christina Pollard at Scratchtown Brewing Company in Ord, Nebraska. And they were innovators, but they're also really smart business people. Um, they ended up installing solar panels on the top of Scratchtown, which significant, significantly uh, reduced their utility costs, um, help improve their bottom line, and help them continue serving you delicious beer. So what is the Rural Energy for America program all about? Um, besides beer, it's about helping small rural businesses uh, reduce their energy costs, um, become more energy efficient, um, and become rooted in rural communities. So I want to tell you a little bit about our Rural Energy for America program today and how you might be able to put it to work as well. Uh, if you're not familiar with USDA Rural Development, we are a partner and a catalyst um, for rural communities. We have uh, programs and projects for communities, for businesses, and for folks interested in housing development. We mostly serve rural Nebraska, uh, but we also have some projects and some programs that are eligible um, statewide, especially uh, projects that impact agricultural producers. So in addition to understanding the opportunities available through the REAP program, I hope you'll think of us when you're building a new town hall, when you're thinking about expanding a small retail business, or when you're thinking about uh, purchasing a home in rural Nebraska. Uh, we have more than 40 programs. In addition to the housing, community, and business programs um, administered by the USDA Rural Development State of Nebraska office, uh, we also have uh, USDA RD uh, partners that serve regional programs, including our telecommunications and electric programs, um, and we're happy to help you get in touch with the right people to solve your community needs. We had an impact of almost $270 million last year through all of our variety of programs right here in Nebraska. Um, so we really are distributing resources to rural communities and ag producers that move the dial for Nebraska. We have offices in Norfolk, Kearney, Lincoln, North Platte, and Scotts Bluff. So if any of you traveled here to Lincoln um, from the rest of our wide, beautiful state, uh, rest assured that we have boots on the ground in a community near you, and we're willing to sit down with you, roll up our shirt sleeves, and help you figure out a Rural Energy for America program grant application or any of the other applications that we offer through our office. So let's get down to it. Um, what is REAP and what can it do for you? Um, USDA RD offers grants and loans for installing renewable energy systems and for energy assistance improvements. Um, so both new energy generation and making your business more energy efficient. Um, when we talk about your business, there are two sorts of businesses that can be eligible for these grants and loans. The first is agricultural producers. Um, agricultural producers statewide are eligible for our REAP program as long as at least 50% of your income comes from agricultural productions. Um, so you can be a multifaceted business, but if, if at least 50% of your income uh, comes from an agricultural product, we're happy to work with you. We can also help 
rural small businesses of all types and stripes. So if you are a business in a community uh, with a population of less than 50,000, um, we can work with you through the Rural Energy for America program. Um, businesses like um, the Scratch Town Brewing Company, small retail businesses, um, all kinds of agricultural businesses, um, and everything in between are eligible in those small rural communities. So we can offer uh, renewable energy systems and energy efficiency improvement grants and guaranteed loans. Um, we can also offer renewable energy assistance audits so you can get a baseline of where you're at and where your improvements might make a difference. So once you're determined eligible and categorized as either an energy efficiency project or a new energy development project, um, how can you use the resources that we're offering to you? For energy efficiency projects, um, the uses are pretty broad. Um, new lighting, new heating, new cooling, new ventilation, fans, automated controls, insulation. Um, if you've walked into an older building lately and you've looked around and you, you see um, anything in which energy might be lost or improved, we can probably address it. So if your lighting is old, if there are cracks in your walls, if the windows need replaced, these are the kinds of things where you're losing energy and wasting money, and these are the kinds of things that we can replace. If you're talking about a new energy um, uh, creation project, those are also very varied. Uh, we can work with you on solar, wind, small hydroelectric, anaerobic digesters, geothermal, and wave or ocean power. I'm still waiting for my Nebraska wave or ocean power application. If any of you are interested, please see me today. Um, we'll, would love to see what, what you're doing there. Um, again, our eligible uses are pretty broad. Retail, warehousing, manufacturing, um, irrigation. We've actually done a number of irrigation-related projects, um, usually changing um, irrigation motors from diesel to electric. Um, we've gotten very good at those. Um, we're happy to help you and your agricultural business do that as well. We've installed big solar panels, small solar panels. We've installed solar panels all across the state. Um, again, my team is, is pretty well-versed in um, working with solar projects. We'd be happy to work with you. Um, we've done fewer biomass projects, but it is an eligible um, kind of activity, and we, we would be happy to work through any biomass ideas or projects you have, as well as geothermal and wind power, hydroelectric, and again, the ocean generation. So let me um, give you some examples here to help you get your head around the, the ways and um, types of projects that we, we can assist with. Um, this is one of my favorite projects. Um, this is Linda Graff. Linda and Mark Graff uh, have a small retail business, um, Graff Honey. Um, they're in downtown Emerson. Um, and they figured out that even in their very small retail business, if they added solar panels um, to their business, they could significantly improve their energy costs. Um, Linda says that they now have a $21 a month energy bill, which was a significant improvement for them. Um, so even though they were a very small business, a small Main Street business, um, REAP was able to not only help them pay for those solar panels, but improve their bottom line over time. Um, another good example is uh, Jeff and Shelly Zaki up in Pierce, Nebraska. Um, this is, you know, a, a thrilling, I know, um, exciting image um, of an irrigation pivot, but this is the kind of work that we do, um, changing diesel to electric. Um, and now it's kind of fun, you know, Jeff can pull out his phone and monitor his energy usage and monitor how his, um, how his irrigation is going um, because we were able to install the new technology. So let's get down to brass tacks. Um, what can you get and how? Um, so we can offer loan guarantees up to 75% of total eligible project costs. You got sort of a risky project, you're having a hard time um, finding a lending partner, we can come in behind with the guarantee to make sure you can get to yes. Uh, but probably the most valuable thing we can offer is grants for up to 50% of total eligible project costs uh, for both energy efficiency and new energy production. Um, the combined can be up to 75%. Um, so you have to have at least 25% of skin in the game. 
the maximum amount for energy efficiency is half a million, and the maximum amount for um, new energy development is one million. We're funded both through annual appropriations and through a significant benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, so we have uh, significantly increased our volume of Rural Energy for America program applications. Um, those funds keep coming, those applications keep coming in the door and we keep getting those funds back out the door. Um, we've now moved to a quarterly application period. So if you have an idea, we can work with you pretty quickly. But I would advise you to work with us pretty quickly um, for two reasons. One, if you work with my team, we're better able to position you to get to yes on the grants. These are competitive projects, um, so use my staff expertise um, to work for you and make sure that you put in an application um, that gets approved. Also, um, while the Inflation Reduction Act funds are technically available through 2027, um, dollars are going fast. Um, and I would advise that uh, we might have funds available through 2025. Um, if you have a project in mind, now's the time to take action. Um, a couple of other application notes. Um, we might require an energy audit, a feasibility study, or an assessment. Um, I would say that one of the good things about the way that we've been working these projects is if you don't get funded in one application cycle, you can get feedback and resubmit that application. Um, so if, if those pieces don't come together as you like the first time, we can work with you on the second time. Um, renewable energy is based on your history of energy uses. Uh, so we do need to gather some background data. Um, and a question that I often get is that an, is can a new business um, apply for REAP? And the answer is yes, if it is new energy generation. So if you're a brand new business and you would like to install solar, we can work with you. Um, but of course, because you don't have a history of energy efficiency or inefficiency, um, you wouldn't qualify for the energy assistance side of things. Another frequently asked question I get is, um, can we marry programs? So in addition to what the Department of Environment and Energy has to offer, um, USDA has programs to offer, so does um, NRCS, the Natural, National, the Nebraska Conservation and uh, Resource System. Um, and you can marry up uh, an EQIP project with a REAP project. Here's the catch. You still can't get more than 50% of your project paid for through federal funds. Um, so if you can get your full 50% um, through REAP, through USDA, you might as well work with one partner rather than two. Um, but if you can't quite get there, um, there's no reason not to reach out to NRCS or another partner um, to see what you can't marry up and, and put together for your project. Uh, this is a link to the Rural Energy for America program homepage. Um, hopefully slides will be available after the conference that you can pull this down, but it's worth looking for um, because there are a few things available to you here. One is a REAP webinar recording, um, which gets into the, to the weeds a little bit more and might help you answer some of your questions, um, as well as the underlying regulations and statutory language um, that may be of use to you as you're putting together your project. Uh, the last thing I want to raise before I, um, I let it go and, and take your questions is um, USDA is really proud to be a part of the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, and while I can't um, administer every program or answer every question for you, um, I did want to provide for you a few contacts um, of colleagues throughout USDA rural development um, so that you're aware of some of the other IRA funded programs um, that are available. Uh, we do have significantly more resources in our Higher Blends Infrastructure Incentive Program. We call it HBIP because we're so fond of acronyms. But if you're interested in HBIP, um, reach out to Jeff Carpenter. Um, we have the uh, New Era and the PACE Program, um, the Powering Affordable Clean Energy Program for Electric Utilities. Uh, the contact there is Arsenia De La Cruz. Um, the EQIP program that I mentioned, which is also about um, conservation and energy efficiency, you can reach out to the Nebraska conservationist Robert Lawson. Um, and it's also worth mentioning um, that the Discrimination Financial Assistance Program was also funded through the Inflation Reduction Act, which is trying to right some historical wrongs for folks who were not uh, given fair treatment through farm service agency programs um, and looking for ways to remedy that. 
uh, Timothy Divis is your point of contact there. Um, I've also provided a, a link here to a guidebook on the IRA if, if we've got any wonks in the room who really want to dig deep. Um, so with that, I think I'll, I'll leave it there, but I'll, I'll stay put for a minute and see if anybody has questions for um, Aaron or myself. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. So now is the time for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Uh, any questions for Yes, Ken. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question is about the REAP program. Um, are there any REAP programs that are available for nonprofits? I noticed you said businesses and uh, rural and ag producers. Are there, are, can nonprofits such as churches uh, receive any of those funding? Uh, my staff has a wealth of knowledge. Sometimes they can come up with a clever workaround, but but really this program is designed for the business community. Uh, with regarding to the uh, with regards to the low to interest loan program, you indicated that there are 290 uh, Nebraska state charter banks uh, that are eligible per, for participation. Would you have a rough estimate since the uh, inception of the program? How many of those banks have participated? Uh, no, but, um, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it gets a rough estimate. Um, I, it's really hard to tell over the last 30 years, how many, a lot of times, uh, you know, a lot of these banks are rural, rural community banks. And so they're very small. And so they may have done one loan, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. So off the top of my head, I would say, you know, if, if we've got about 50%, you know, of those, that'd probably be a really good number. Um, probably. Um, we do get a lot of lenders, uh, repeat lenders, right? So we have a lot of the bigger banks that do, um, the majority of our loans most of the time too. But again, uh, we do like to have the, the small community banks. And I think that's really beneficial for, for the communities, um, themselves, those smaller communities, because it really has, you know, they have the relationships and, and things like that. So we do try to go out and talk to them and, and, provide them but uh it just depends yeah so i i don't have a great number on how many actually participated so sorry i have a question for Corey. if you'd pass the mic back to him Corey, are you familiar with the tag program can you share the NPPD's news as it relates to reap yeah i can and uh i would also pass along our uh, appreciation directly to Kate. Uh, the uh, Agency of Rural Development uh, had a uh, grant opportunity, another uh, uh, competitive grant, uh, this one for assisting the Rural uh, Energy for America program. And uh, we put together a proposal to provide cost-free audits or energy assessments uh, for either MPPD customers or the customers of our wholesale utility partners. And uh, in turn, um, hope to turn more of those uh, applications into uh, winners for Nebraskans since uh, it does ultimately boil up to uh, a 50 state competition, especially on the larger projects. So thank you, Kate. Thank you, Corey. Other questions for Kate or Aaron? Can you just review quickly what the time sensitivities are to application of your programs? Is the clock ticking or what's the window look like? Sure. For the loan program, there isn't an application deadline. Uh, like I kind of mentioned, the, the funds revolve. Um, and so we've been doing, we usually do 300 to 400 loans a year. Uh, and that, that money, as it goes out, just comes back in so we can keep continuing uh, to do that. If it's a bigger project, so for example, if uh, we've done some bigger school loans over a million, two million, three million dollars, um, those are subject to what funding we currently have available. So there could be some timing on that when we have money available. But other than that, just for normal projects, uh, there's really no timing they have to worry about. For the Rural Energy for America program, our application deadlines are quarterly. Um, the, the more generous um, matching grants are available through funding from the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, and I would encourage folks to get those applications in through 2025. Uh, the REAP program will continue after the Inflation Reduction Act funds um, expire, but probably at less generous uh, matching rates. Um, that's how our program worked before. So bottom line, act now. 
there's been a number of national companies moving into the area of marketing solar, and they're doing it through a 20-year loan program. So what happens is our money leaves the state. What I was asking, is there a way to perhaps ramp up the loan program with the state energy, uh, environmental energy office, so that we could work more closely with public power to try to keep these dollars recirculating in our local economy instead of being exported out of our economy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, like you mentioned, the, the solar companies, and if you're familiar with those, are some definitely, um, I don't want to say shady, but there's just you know some not as reputable companies maybe that come in and, and put in shoddy work. And um, a lot of times their, their, their models have to do with the financing, right? And so they offer very low monthly payments. Um, they promise, you know, no utility bills and things of that nature. And so that's kind of one of their marketing strategies and their, their tactics to get people to do the solar. Um, we've, I, I don't know if there's, yes, we want to definitely, hopefully deter that kind of behavior and maybe offer a viable solution. It's, if people don't know, and that's just part of it, getting people to know about our program, right? So um, I think we'd like to work with the utilities, figure out something. Um, it's a little tricky because we don't want to go out too far on our loans. You know, we we want the money to come back fairly regularly. So we don't want to be lending out for 20, 30 years. And it takes a long time to get the money back to loan out again. So that's kind of our struggle there. I think like competitive, like rate wise, we're pretty competitive as far as, you know, what we offer, um, and, and things of that nature. But it's, it's kind of just those, when they come in, they have, they've got their tactics, they've got how they're going to spend it. And, and sometimes they can get the payments to be pretty low and it looks pretty good to the, to the consumer. And so it's really kind of battling that, I think more than anything, but I don't know, that probably didn't really answer your question too well, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think we want to be a viable solution to, to those kind of, uh, lending practices. I think one of the things we need to consider is that Nebraska doesn't really have very many incentives for solar and a low interest loan program would be the closest thing we would have to that. So if we want to move this transition forward and embrace more, features, functions, capabilities of public power, I think there needs to be some kind of a bridge between the two so that, and, and maybe there's a loan service agency, a credit union or something that works with them more exclusively. I know there's a number of banks that in my personal experience are hesitant to work with the state on the loan program just because there's extra paperwork. and. So they don't want to really do that, but if maybe there's some way to streamline it, make it go forward, and I'd be happy to help. <laughs> As we wrap up here, I just wanted to mention very briefly, um, Brant Richardson, I don't think is in the room, but he is staffing our booth upstairs. Um, he's available if you want to go pick his brain about a project you might have in mind. Um, and I know paper is old school, but I did bring you some paper um, there's a fact sheet and some of our program guides up here if anybody wants to to grab one as a reminder um, of our our opportunities and to follow up we'd be happy to work with you thanks all for attending.